Assalamu alaikum, dear sisters. Welcome to our Tuesday webinar series. Our speaker today is our very own Sheikh Mohammed Al Room, and today it is going to be part three of our series on fifth of fasting. I would like to thank Sheikh Ahmad for accepting our invitation. We are live on Zoom and also at the Facebook. Uh, after the talk today, if you have any questions, you can type it as always in the Q and A chat box. If you're on Zoom, or if you're watching at Facebook then you can type it as a comment. Very quick introductions. Islamic Center of Kuwait, as you know, is involved in Dawah activities in the state of Kuwait in the English language. And Sheikh Ahmad is a popular khatib with Islamic Center of Kuwait for a long time. Sheikh Arum study in Faculty of Medicine of Kuwait University and is presently working in Kuwait Armed Force Hospital. Sheikh Ahmad is involved in Dawah activities and serves Arabic and English speaking communities in Kuwait. And he gives numerous halaqas, uh, which are today these days online. He has also traveled on various destinations, including United Kingdom to spread the word of Islam. Without further delay, I hand it over to you, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salli wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala ali wa ashabi wa ashadu ala ilaha illallah. وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله من بعد حياكم الله brothers and sisters and جزاكم الله خير uh, the brothers and sisters in ICK for uh, providing this uh, opportunity for me to uh, discuss with you the issues of Ramadan and fasting uh, the last point was what are the things which invalidate fasting and I, uh, the last point was the الحيد والنفاس uh, the menses and the postpartum bleeding. Uh, then the next point, ta'amud uh, al uh, which, which, which is masturbation. Intentionally, intentionally, when the the person makes the uh, the semen to comes out intentionally, this is haram. This is not al allowed. Uh, masturbation is not allowed uh, in Islam because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ إِلَّا عَلَىٰ أَزْوَاجِهِمْ أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ غَيْرُ مَلُومِينَ فَمَنْ بِتَغَى وَرَاءَ ذَلِكَ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْعَادُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned one of the points of the one of the criteria of the believers وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ They protect their furuj, their private parts. Means they don't do the zina, they don't do adultery and other things. Except for their wives and also for their slaves. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, It means the one who goes beyond the wife and the slave, his slave. They are the transgressors. So from this ayah, the scholar said, the, the masturbation is haram. Okay? So this is one point. What is the ruling of masturbation? Okay, this is haram. The next point, which is related to our uh, dars, uh, lecture, will, if the person did that, okay, he did some, he did a sin. Okay, is it, uh, is the, the, the fast valid or not valid? Will this action nullify the, uh, the fast or not? This will nullify the fast according to majority of scholars. And the proof, this ayah, and also we have the hadith. We have the hadith. And the hadith, Bukhari Muslim, the Prophet وسلم, mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, يَدَعُ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ وَشَهْوَتَهُ مِنْ أَجْلِي The Prophet, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mentioned the, the virtue of fast. Okay, why? Okay, this virtue of, of fasting, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the person who is fasting, he avoids food drink and his desire his lust for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is very important this is very important and there are more details about that so uh, here the main point if the person did that did that intentionally then we tell him your your fast is not valid your fast is not valid you have to seek istighfar you make istighfar, you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have to make up this day, later. I mean after Ramadan. Uh, the next point which invalidates the, the fast, and niyyah, the intention. 
نية الإفطار. If the person intends to break his fast, خلاص. It is done. You, your day is not valid. Okay? And this is not necessarily uh, haram. Okay? This is not necessarily haram. Okay? Uh, how? If the person, I think I mentioned this example, I will repeat this again before. If the person is a traveler, so now I'm a traveler. Okay, we are a group, we are travelers from Kuwait to Mecca. So now we are in Mecca and we are going to, to Medina or to stay in Mecca. So uh, from the night, I say, okay, tomorrow I'm going to fast. Is it compulsory to fast Ramadan? Why I'm traveling? It's not compulsory, but I decided to fast. So tomorrow, after uh, the sunrise, it is 8 a.m. in the morning, 9 a.m. in the morning, I said, Khalas, I will not fast. Why? Because the whole group are not fasting. So I like to enjoy the food with them, to take the breakfast with them, the lunch together, okay, inside the, inside the hotel. So I intended not to fast. So I broke my intention of fasting. So now I'm not fasting. Then after one hour, I realized when my friends woke up, they were sleeping. This, I realized that all of them were, all of them are fasting. So now, خلاص. Because you are fasting, okay, I will fast. We say, yo, because you broke, you fast by intention. Okay. So the intention. Uh, also, one of the things, al-Islam, al-Islam. If the person left Islam, okay, his fast is not valid. His fast also is not valid. Tahib. The the thing which is the yeah, the scholar said it it has an expiation it has kafara which is al jima the intercourse with the wife the sexual intercourse with the wife this is uh, the the worst thing to break your fast with okay of course as a practical not worse than the the, the shirk bil uh, billah what what do we have? We have a hadith of Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala an. He said, we were sitting with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then a man came to us and he said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, halakt, I'm, I'm destroyed, O Rasulullah. Why? He said, waqa'atu ala mra'ati fi nahar Ramadan. I did the intercourse with my wife and the day of Ramadan. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, do you have a slave to free this slave? He said, no, I don't have. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, can you fast two continuous months? The man said, no. Then the Prophet, uh, then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, can you feed 60 poor people? The man said, no, I don't have food. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam kept silent. Then someone brought food to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As you know, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because he was the leader of the Ummah, he is Imam of the Masjid, he is the judge, okay? He is the legend, he is everything Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So of course, if I want to, and right now, if you like to give zakah or you, you give food, okay, you go to the legend and you tell the legend or you go to the Imam of the Masjid, you tell Imam, Wallahi, I have this 20 KD or 100 KD, please, Spend this in, in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So someone brought food to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, dates. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, take this food. He said to the man who did the mistake, who broke his fast, he said, take this food, then feed poor people. Then the, Prophet, the, the man said, oh Rasulullah, ala afkar minni? Oh Rasulullah, you want me to feed poor people who are Worse than us, he said, Wallahi ma bayna la bataiha al bayt afkar min al bayt. He said, The man said, Why Allah, no one is poor more than my house. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Atimu ahlak, feed your family. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Feed your family. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam laughed. Uh, of course, yeah, this is a great hadith, uh, yeah, and we, we can talk about the mercy of Islam, the love of Rasulullah to his people, and uh, yeah, the Prophet was not tough with the, those who 
to commit the sins. Uh, so from this hadith, we learn that the intercourse with the wife is one of the things which invalidate the fast. And it, no doubt it is a major sin. And there is kafara. There is kafara. And the kafara should be in order. How, what, what do you mean by order? Yani, if the, the person did this mistake, the first thing we tell him, you should free a slave. If he said, I don't have a slave, and there is no slaves now, I don't have many for slaves, Khalas. then you go to the next step, which is fasting two continuous months. If the person said, I cannot, I cannot fast two continuous months, then we tell him, then you go to the third step, which is feeding 60 uh, people, I mean uh, poor people, 60 poor people, paid. Uh, and of course, he should make up this day, okay, because he broke this day, and he invalidated this day, so he should make one day, and, and uh, that uh, also in addition to the two months, paid. Uh, should the woman do the kafara also with the man? Yes. Majority scholar said also women should do the same. We tell the woman because you did the mistake with your husband, so you should uh, free a slave. If you cannot, you fast two continuous months. If you, you, you cannot, you feed 60 poor people. Uh, yeah, and here there is a point that sometimes women say, say Sheikh. Wallahi, I don't. I know this is haram. This is a great, this major sin. I don't want to do that, but my husband forced me to do that. Okay. Uh, generally speaking, if the woman forced to do that, then she's not a sinner. She's not a sinner. She she should not do the kafara. The man is a sinner. But we should ask the woman, how did he force you? Did he bring a knife? And he said, I will kill you. I'm going to kill you. Did he say, I will, I will shoot you by the gun? Or I throw you from the window? Okay. And he can't do this. Then we say, yes, this is forcing you. But for example, if he forced you, we ask you the woman, how did he force you? If she said, Wallahi, he said, uh, you will not visit your family for three weeks. This is not acceptable. It's not acceptable. Okay, so forcing, if the woman said, Wallah, he forced me, it means he was, do, yani if, if you don't obey him, he will do, he will harm you. He will break a bone, he will kill you, and yani he will do something uh, serious. Okay. طيب. Now, some points will not invalidate the fast, okay? Yeah, and the scholars usually mention the points which are okay. Yeah, and you can do these things uh, during the Ramadan, during the day of Ramadan, and they will not in, uh, affect your fast. Uh, the first one, the wet dreams. And there is a difference between masturbation and wet dreams. So if a person, uh, for example, he's fasting, the man, Okay, then he prayed the Fajr. After the Fajr, he slept. Okay, yeah, for example, this, this, this year, inshallah, the Fajr Adhan will be four. So, about four. And we pray, we finish the prayer maybe 4.40 or 4.30. And the work starts at 10 a.m. So, I can sleep four hours maybe. So, when he woke up, this person, he saw the wet dream. He saw the simon. Okay. Should he make up this day or he can't continue? No, you can't continue. Take a shower, make ghusl, then you continue your day. Why? Because this is not by your intention. This is not within your control. This is not within your control. And we have a proof for that in Bukhari and Muslim. Um Salama and Aisha said, the Prophet was waking up for Fajr and he was Jinnab. Or the time of Fajr. Enters and the Prophet ﷺ was Junub. Okay, yani, uh, here of course the hadith does mean the wet dream, it means after the intercourse with his wife. 
عليه الصلاة والسلام. So he he will make the ghusl and he will he will continue fasting. طيب. The next point kissing the wife, kissing the wife. طيب. عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها said the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was kissing his wife. ويباشر. What does it mean? Ubashir, yeah, maybe he hugs his wife. Okay, he kisses his wife. Yeah, uh, but without intercourse. وهو صائم. And he's uh, he's fasting. But Aisha رضي الله عنها said, وكان أملككم لإربه صلى الله عليه وسلم. وكان أملككم لإربه. يعني Aisha said the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was doing that with his wife. Okay. But at the end of the hadith, he said, "Well, the Prophet ﷺ was the most person to control himself." So, what do we understand from the saying of Aisha? As if Aisha radiallahu taala is saying, "If you can't control yourself, then you you do that. If you cannot control yourself, don't do that. Don't take the risk. Be careful." Right? And in another hadith, Aisha said, "The Prophet ﷺ was kissing me while he was fasting, and also I am fasting." Okay, so is it allowed for the, the, the man to kiss his wife? Yes, this is allowed. But we tell the person, if you cannot control yourself, then you should avoid that. You should avoid that. Uh, and also the hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked, أيقبل صائم، okay the fasting person can he kiss it means his wife طيب then the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said سل هذه ask this this lady أم سلمة his wife رضي الله تعالى فأخبرته that the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was doing that she said the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was doing that طيب then the one who asked the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said أو رسول الله Allah forgive your sins the previous and the past and the 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 future. يعني what is the meaning? The meaning, oh Rasulullah, your sins forgiven. Okay, but for us, we don't know. يعني as if telling يعني this is special for you. Then the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, أما والله إني لا تفاكل لا أخشاكم له. I fear Allah the most. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I know Allah the most. Okay, the khasha, it means the fear with knowledge. So the point is, brothers and sisters, that kissing the wife is allowed. But you should know that I can't control myself. But if you cannot control yourself, then don't take the risk. Don't take the risk. Be careful because the expiation is very serious. So, so we can understand from the hadith that we mentioned, can the man sleep with his wife? Can the man sleep with his wife? And the same, yes, he can sleep. Okay. Uh, the, what is not allowed is, uh, is the intercourse. This is haram. But uh, to do the other things with the wife, it's okay. But again, if you know that you can control yourself. Uh, also, one of the things which are allowed, taking shower. Taking shower. Especially the previous years, because Ramadan was in summer, okay, and the temperature, you know, if you remember before six years, it was in, uh, يعني in June, July, the temperature up to 51. You remember maybe, okay? So maybe you some people take a shower twice a day. Is it allowed if I'm fasting? Yes, this is allowed. Yes, this is allowed because the Prophet as we mentioned, he took the shower, uh, and he and he was fasting. He took the, uh, he did ghusl, alayhi salatu wassalam. Tayyib, can I do mad madwa? Mad madwa istinshaq? Mad madwa istinshaq means to wash the mouth from inside and istinshaq, to sniff the water, then to throw it. This is allowed, but it should not be vigorously. You do it very light. Tayyib, why? Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to laqeet ibn sabira, wa baalaq fi istinshaq illa takuna sa'ima. What's mean bad of a Do it yani, uh, vigorously, except if you are fasting. Don't do it. Uh, you should do it soft. Uh, it means yani, when you put the water, okay, don't take the water inside too much like this. 
Why? Because the risk will be higher that the water will go inside your stomach. Uh, also, one of the points which are allowed, التذوق الطعام للحاجة. Tasting the food if there is a need. How? Abdullah ibn Abbas said, لا بأس, it is, there is no harm, it is not haram to taste the vinegar or anything. ما لم يدخل حل, حلقه وهو صعب. No, no problem if you taste the vinegar or the other, other things. If it doesn't go to your stomach. If, the, if it doesn't go to your stomach. Okay? Uh, Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah rahmahullah ta'ala said, tasting the food, makruh, not recommended, disliked, if there is no need. And it will not invalidate your fast. And if there is no, if there is need, it's okay. Like doing the madmada for the wudu. So, يعني, how to apply this hadith? So, for example, our sisters who are cooking, or also the men, maybe there are, يعني, of course, there are men who are cooking. Maybe he is uh, working in a restaurant, he's pre preparing the breakfast. So, uh, the, the, the mother, she is cooking at home, and she needs to check, she needs to check the level of salt, the level of spice. So if she needs, she put something on the tongue, okay, to check the level of the salt. It's okay. Has she should spit it out, okay, not to enjoy the food, okay, not to enjoy the food, okay. So this is fatwa from Abdullah ibn Abbas. This fatwa from Abdullah ibn Abbas. But no doubt to avoid that, this is uh, better, okay. How maybe you can um, you can tell if you have a kid who is not fasting. He's, for example, seven years old or nine years old. Your son, your daughter, they are not fasting. Okay, you can't tell them. Or maybe, uh, maybe one of the, the, the women who are not fasting because they have the menses. Okay, so you can't tell them to, to taste. Or if there is no need, how? Yeah, for example, I'm cooking something. I'm preparing the, uh, the soup. Okay, and I put the salt, but I don't know whether the salt is good or more or less. Okay, don't put the soup, uh, don't put salt. Why? After the iftar, you can add the salt, alhamdulillah. Yani, no need to, to, to make sure that the level of the salt is okay now. You can't delay that. Okay? You can start at the time of iftar, wallah, the taste. Uh, it is not salty. I need salt. You add the salt, alhamdulillah. Okay? So basically, brother and sisters, we should avoid tasting the food. We should avoid tasting the food. But you know, sometimes you need. Yeah, maybe you are in a place and you need to buy something. And I want to check. Maybe it is a spoiled food. Okay? Tayyib. Uh, Al-Hijama. Al-Hijama. This is a very important issue, Al-Hijama. What's the meaning of Hijama? Cupping. Hijama cupping, it is a kind of treatment. Very old treatment. Okay, how they put the cups on the skin. Okay, usually on the back. With the cup, then we suck, we make a pressure, then to, to make the skin like a hump. So, so yeah, like a doom. Okay, uh, then we do small incisions by a blade. Then we suck again the blood. This is hijama, cupping. Okay. Is it allowed or not allowed? And if it is not allowed, will this invalidate the fast, fasting or not? طيب. Let's see the hadith. We have a hadith that the Prophet وسلم, said, Aftar al hajim wal mahjum. The one who's doing hijama, who's doing cupping, after. Okay? And the one the cupping is done for him, also after. He's not fasting, both of them. This is hadith where in the Tirmidhi Abu Dawood. And Sheikh al mentioned this is hadith, authentic hadith. And other, also other scholars. We have another hadith, Abdullah ibn Abbas. And this hadith in Bukhari. The Prophet Abdullah ibn Abbas said, the Prophet وسلم, did hijama while fasting. Okay? So we have hadith in Bukhari that the Prophet وسلم, did hijama while fasting. So 
الامام احمد رحمه الله ابن سيرين وعطاء والاوزاع واسحاق وابن منذر وابن خزيمه وابن تيميه اوكي آه علي بن ابي طالب ابو هريره عائشه اوكي زي سيد رضي الله تعالى عنهم they took the first hadith they said if the person does hijama cupping while fasting so he is inviting his fast okay uh, the, the other opinion the opinion of the majority of scholars Abu Hanifa, Malik, Shafi'i, okay, and Ibn Mas'ud, Ibn Umar, Ibn Abbas, uh, Anas, Abu Sa'id Khudri, okay. and other scholars, they said, it will not invalidate your fast. You can do hijama while fasting. Why? Because the hadith. Because the hadith. طيب. So now, how can we use both of a hadith if they are, both of them, uh, authentic? طيب. Now, that the Prophet did hijama while fasting, this is clear hadith, and Bukhari. What about the first hadith? The Prophet said, after al hajj mahjum They said, what is the meaning of the hadith? It means that the one who's doing hijama, he's doing something will lead to break, to, to break his fast, to invalidate his fast. What is the meaning of that? Because before, how, how the people were doing hijama, Okay, they used to uh, to put a cup. Then there is something. Yani, so suppose this is the body, this is the back of the man, and I am doing the hijama. Okay, so what I will do? I will put like a hose. Okay, uh, sorry, a cup. Then there is hose. Then how to make the pressure? I will suck. Okay, I put the hose. Then I will suck the air. To make a pressure okay then i will make incision then i will suck again so sucking the second sucking the second time there is a risk there is a possibility that some blood will come inside so if blood comes inside then this will invalidate my fast so the meaning of the hadith that after al hajim because he will put himself in a risk at risk to drink to 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 drink some blood and the person now i'm doing hijab for this person this is called mahjoom okay when i suck blood from him then he will feel weakness and he will ask for please give me some juice i feel dizzy he will not continue fasting it will be difficult for him so the hadith means both of them at risk to break the fast this is the, the hadith, this is the meaning of the hadith, this is the meaning of the hadith, and يعني, Allah, alam, the opinion of the majority of scholars uh, is stronger. Okay. Uh, and also, يعني, what also support the, the opinion of the majority of scholars, uh, Anas and Bukhari, a student of Anas ibn uh, Malik, عن, called Thabit. Thabit. He asked Anas, "Akuntum takrahun al-hijam al-isaim at the time of Rasulullah. Did you dislike the hijam, the cupping at the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu for the person who was fasting?" And I said, "No, we don't hate that. We are okay to do hijama. We are okay to do cupping for the uh, for the person if he's fasting. Illa min ajl al-dhaf, except if it is there is weakness." So Anas radiallahu ta'ala gave us two points. The first point, it's okay for the fasting to do cupping. But if we expect weakness, then we avoid cupping. So what do we understand from that? We understand that cupping by itself will not break your fast. But what can break your fast? What is after cupping? Maybe if the person is too sick, he is very weak. When we do hijama, he should drink something. Then we tell him, we do the cupping for you now, but you should drink something. Or you, if you can, you if you can wait, wait after the sunset. Okay. Uh, okay. Why I say this is important, this issue, maybe I took longer time. And this, uh, this issue, I mean the issue of hijama. Because the scholars will 
uh, take the same ruling for uh, uh, blood donation. So the scholars who said cupping will invalidate your fast, they said also blood donation will invalidate your fast. And the scholars who said no, it will not invalidate your fast, they said also blood donation is okay. Blood donation is okay. Come on. But again, no doubt. Uh, yani blood donation is, uh, uh, yani is more difficult than cupping. Because you know, cupping, we take very little blood. Maybe uh, uh, 50, 60, 70, 100 ml of blood. While blood donation, maybe 400 or 500 ml. Okay, so no doubt there is a big difference between the blood donation and, and cupping. Okay, so we tell the patient, don't do blood donation. Okay, but if it is urgent and uh, there is a serious case, okay, donate the blood. And if you think that you can't continue, continue fasting, but you think, you think it is difficult, eat and drink and wake up this day later. And, uh, because I'm working in the lab, we, we notice, subhanAllah, during the month of Ramadan, there is a problem. Okay, uh, and also after Ramadan. Why? Because less people donate blood. Less people donate blood. Okay. Also, uh, what is uh, allowed for the person who's fasting, uh, like al-ktihal, eyeliner, wal-hukna, okay, wal-qatra, wa sham al Okay, these things will not invalidate your يعني, eyeliner. Wal-hukna. Uh, hukna is to, to add something, medicine, through the anus suppositories okay this is okay well qatra eye drops for example ear drops this is okay sham mutib smelling the perfume all of these things are okay or are okay will not invalidate your fast okay okay i said ear drops eye drops okay uh, dropping uh, the nose drops this is different story why? Because the Prophet sallallahu said to Laqib Sabra, we mentioned the hadith, وَبَالِغْ فِي الْإِسْتِنْشَاقِ And do, sniff the water vigorously, except if you are fasting. Why? Because the nose, okay, can lead to the stomach. If you put something in your uh, mouth or your nose, both of them, I mean, both openings can lead to the lungs and to the stomach. So be careful, you should avoid the ear, uh, sorry, the, the nose drops, nasal spray, okay? Try to avoid that. Why? Because there is risk, it will go to your stomach. Okay. Uh, the, the point of, uh, I mean, maybe I mentioned this many times, the point of, uh, the dextrose, the injections. Okay. Sheikh uh, uh, and uh, also other scholars, they said all kinds of injection will not invalidate your fast. Antibiotic, uh, Pfizer, Oxford, I mean the vaccines for the uh, coronavirus, uh, uh, antibiotic, insulin, all kinds of the injections will not invalidate your fast. Sheikh <laughs> said even the dextrose. The, the drip you take. This will not invalidate your fast. Okay. Uh, also, what is allowed? A siwak. It means cleaning your, your teeth and mouth by siwak. Okay, this is allowed. This is allowed. There is hadith uh, that, uh, and you can find this in, from some scholars, they say, uh, siwak is allowed before Dhuhr Adhan. But after Dhuhr Adhan, no, it is not allowed to do siwak. Why? Because there is hadith. They mentioned because there is hadith, but the hadith is not authentic. Okay, the hadith says that uh, use the siwak in the morning, but not after the dhuhr. Al ashit means after the dhuhr. Okay, but it's not authentic hadith, so it's okay and allowed to use the siwak. It's okay to use the siwak. Uh, so, can I use the brush teeth, uh, uh, the toothpaste? Okay, uh, you can, but you should be careful. Why? Because it is a very strong, usually, usually the, the toothpaste is very strong. 
material. So we tell you, try your best to avoid that. And if you use it, be careful not to swallow anything. Be careful. Okay. Uh, what about the uh, swallowing the sputum? Oh, sorry, before that, the saliva, no problem. I have the saliva. So the saliva is 24 hours in your mouth. This is something healthy. If you don't have saliva, then you have problem with your salivary glands. Okay, so uh, to spit every one, every minute, okay? So, yeah, some people, subhanAllah, they, they spit every minute in the tissue or outside. So this is not sunnah, okay? And this will not invalidate your fast. You can swallow it, no problem. But now, the point is with sputum, with the sputum, okay? So uh, if it is not in the mouth, you know, sometimes you feel it here, in your throat, or in your chest, or in your sinuses. Okay, then you swallow it, no problem. But the point is, if it reaches to your mouth, if it reaches to your mouth, okay, some scholars said, if it reaches to your mouth, then you swallow it again, this will invalidate your fast. Other scholars said, this is okay, will not invalidate your fast, but no doubt, yani, this is dirt. This is dirt, this is not normal, yani, like the saliva. Sputum means, this is a kind of infection you have in your chest or your sinuses, so you should remove it from your mouth. To be safe, remove it from your, spit it out. Uh, uh, sometimes, yeah, there is, there is something difficult to avoid. Difficult to avoid. Yani, like what, yani, uh, after Fajr, I took my uh, pre-dawn meal. Um, you know, if you eat meat, chicken, okay, there will be something or nuts. Okay. Uh, pistachio or something, something will be between your teeth. So if you swallow something not intentionally difficult to avoid, خلاص, no problem, no problem, because you did not intend and difficult to avoid that. So no problem. Uh, sometimes, subhanAllah, the, you, some people, the, the, the gum is very sensitive. Okay, uh, when you touch, okay, with anything, it will bleed. So if you swallow this blood without intention, it's okay. It's okay, no problem. This will not affect your fast. طيب. قي غير المتعمد. Vomiting without intention, as we mentioned before, this will not invalidate your fast. This will not invalidate your fast. So you can continue your fasting. Why? Because you did not intend that. Okay, now let's talk about the excuses, okay? Who are, who can break their fast in Ramadan? Or who should not fast in Ramadan? Number one, Al-Marid, sick. Uh, Allah, this is clear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Those who are travelers or sick, then they can fast later. It means after Ramadan. Um, but let's classify that. Number one, the one who is sick, طيب, uh, يعني something like, we don't mention that this person is sick. يعني, uh, like what? يعني, uh, يعني like headache. Especially the first day. Okay, suppose that I have headache. Can can I say, well, I, I'm sick, I, I should, I can break my fast. No, we don't, we tell you, no, no need. You know, sometimes you have a headache, it is something, and we don't mention that I have a headache. Just I sleep maybe for half an hour, then I wake up, I'm okay. Or maybe you have runny nose. You don't need to take medicine, don't need to spray anything in your nose. Okay, you practice your life, your day normally. Okay, you have normal day. So if the case like this, then we tell you it is haram to break your fast. You should fast. Uh, number two, if you are sick and with fasting, you will be worse or it will be difficult for you. I mean, fasting will make it difficult for you. Uh, it will prolong your uh, sickness. Then we tell you, you uh, don't fast. 
we tell you don't fast. Why? Because, yeah, and, yeah, and for example, um, uh, you have a flu, you have flu, okay? You have sore throat, uh, coughing, runny nose, uh, yeah, headache, severe or medium head, headache. Uh, uh, you, yeah, uh, you took sick leave, you don't go to your work. In this case, we tell you don't fast. If you fast, this is macro. You can fast, but it will be difficult for you. We tell you, no, no, this is macro. Don't fast. So this is the second level. The third level, if you fast, you will cause danger to yourself. You will harm yourself. How? Uh, suppose the person is sick and he has uh, diabetes. This is not controlled diabetes. The doctor told him, you have to take your medicine. Morning, afternoon, night. Okay, he said, no, I want to fast. And the doctor told him, don't fast. Because if you fast, your blood glucose level, blood glucose, blood sugar will go down. Maybe uh, it will go down uh, less than three. You will be uh, hypoglycemic. And uh, you know, that, or maybe many people don't know that hyperglycemia, or sorry, hypoglycemia is more dangerous than hyperglycemia. This is very uh, risky. So if this person fast, we tell him, you are doing something haram because you are killing yourself. Okay? So uh, if it is dangerous, then he should not fast. This is haram. Uh, the, uh, uh, oh, okay, so this is the, the person who is sick. So if he's sick, we, t we tell him, خلاص, you, you don't fast now, and you make up the days later. So this is for something temporary. Yani, uh, someone maybe has uh, surgery, he has flu for three, four days, something like this. And if the person is sick, Something the doctor told him, خلاص, uh, this is chronic disease, you cannot fast. As we know, according to our knowledge right now, Allah in the future, maybe we can know medicine for you, but right now we don't have any medicine for your disease. You have to take the medicine every day. It is not allowed for you to fast. So what do we tell this person? We tell this person like the old man. Of course, you don't fast Ramadan, and after Ramadan, you feed 30 people or 29 people, poor people, according to how many days Ramadan. Uh, next is the, uh, the traveler, the traveler. It is clear in the Quran, Allah SWT said, There are many ahadith. There are many ahadith about traveling. Uh, sorry, about, about the traveler. Should the traveler fast? Should the traveler not to fast? Or what is better? And you notice people fighting. Just to make it easy and inshallah summarized, as Sheikh Bahtameen mentioned, Rahimullah Ta'ala. He said, okay, because we have different hadith. We find the hadith that the Prophet وسلم, was fasting. We find the hadith the Prophet وسلم, was not fasting. We find the hadith that the Prophet وسلم, praised the person who was not fasting. Okay. So different stories. So how to join? So Sheikh Bahtameen, Rahimullah, gave us the conclusion. And of course, other scholars, not only Sheikh Bahtameen. He said, if you are traveling and it is comfortable, you don't feel any difficulty, it is not harmful, so we recommend you to fast. We tell you it's better for you to fast. Okay, how? Yeah, uh, yeah for example, um, I am traveling to Mecca. How, uh, how many hours from Kuwait to Mecca or from Kuwait to Jeddah? Because there is no airport in Mecca. From Kuwait to Jeddah, it is one hour and 45 minutes, almost two hours. So suppose that you are sleeping the whole day. Then after Asa prayer, you went to the airport. Okay, It is easy day. There is no difficulty at all. Okay, Maybe if you are at home, you are, if, I mean, if you are working, it is more difficult. You wake up in the morning, go to work, you take, you drop your children, you pick up your children, you go to the supermarket. But now, because you took this day vacation, you are traveling, so it is very easy for you. So we tell you, 
it is recommended مستحب to fast is it واجب no it is not واجب if you say I don't want to fast it's up to you but we tell you it's better to fast this is number one number two if there is difficulty in fasting how you are fasting for example in summer from Kuwait to Mecca you are driving 20 hours so you lift the house after Fajr the temperature after Fajr 40 then at the time of Dhuhr it is 51 okay and the AC is not working uh, or it is not good and the sun you are very thirsty you feel headache then we tell you don't fast why because it is very difficult for you you can fast but very difficult so we tell you it is cruel for you to fast Break your fast. The sunnah is to break your fast. So this is the second. The third one, if it is harmful, how? We are an army and we are going to fight the kuffar. Okay, and we see them now in front of us and it is Ramadan. And if we fast, then we will be weak. The army will be weak. So in this case, it is haram to fast. Why? Because Fasting during this day can cause a, a big loss for the Muslim army. So it is haram to fast. Okay, so this is for the travelers. Okay, so please don't fight and don't confuse. If you feel it is easy, fast. If you don't feel, if you feel it is difficult, don't fast. That's it. As simple as that. If you are traveling with your family, with your friends, don't fight with them. If they like to fast, let them fast. If they don't want to fast, them not too fast. That's it. Okay. Should we continue or we stop? Okay, uh, we have one question. Uh, so if you want, maybe we can continue for another uh, three to five minutes and then take the okay. question. Okay. Now, the point is, if I am traveling, okay, I am traveling. Okay. When can I break my fast? I mean, yeah, for, for, yeah, for example, I am traveling uh, 3 p.m. So can I, yeah, so I will go to the airport 1 p.m. after Dhuhr. So can I break my fast from the morning? I mean, from the morning, I intend, I'm not fasting, so I take the breakfast and I take my lunch. No, we tell you no. You are traveling by plane, so and your flight uh, three p.m. So you will go to the airport one p.m. and your flight three p.m. Or you 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 are going to the airport three p.m. and your flight five. Yeah, in one hour before Maghrib. So you should fast from the morning. From the morning, you should you should fast. Why? Because you don't know what will happen. Maybe they cancel, especially nowadays, you know, because of Corona. Uh, yeah, they change the rules. We open the airport, we close the airport. We, okay, we delay. You don't know. Okay, so don't, uh, sorry, start and tend to fast. So for example, tomorrow I'm, my flight, 5 p.m. What should I do tonight? I should intend fasting tomorrow as one day of Ramadan. If I go to the airport, then I, I check, and they, they told me the flight on time. So we'll fly 5 p.m. and the Maghrib Adan 6.30. So after, yani, what, okay. Then you can, yani, some, some, yani, some uh, they said, after the boarding, you can break your fast. But before that, don't do Don't eat. But no doubt, to be safe, don't break your fast until you fly. Until you fly, yeah, to be safe. But I, from, from the morning, I take my breakfast and I take my lunch. No, no, this is not allowed. This is not allowed. Uh, if you are traveling by, by car, if you are driving, if you are driving, some scholars said, don't break your fast until you leave the city. What do I mean by leaving? Yeah, for example, here in Kuwait, if you drive from Kuwait to uh, 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 Nwaysib, 
going to, you want to enter Saudi and, and we save exit. Okay. So now I'm, I'm driving from Hawali, for example. You can see the houses, so it is not allowed to eat. If you drive more 10 minutes, still you can see Agela, Abu Futair, Hayheel. If you finish the houses, then it is desert, then you can break your fast. And there is another opinion. Okay, they said no. If I am if I am planning to travel, so tomorrow, for example, I'm going to travel. Okay, what is my plan? Well, I want to travel. 8 a.m. The Fajr Adan, 4 a.m. And uh, I'm traveling 8. So I should wake up in the morning fasting. I should attend fast Ramadan. Then now, after Fajr, I'm preparing my, my, my luggage. I put my things on the car. Before driving the car, you can break your fast. Okay, before driving the car, you can break your fast. This is the, the second opinion. This is the second uh, opinion. We have two hadith. Uh, the first one, Ka'b, uh, sorry, Muhammad Ka'b. He said, I went to Anas Malik, and he was planning to travel, or he was praying to travel. And he pre they prepared the camel for him, yani the car. And he, he, he dressed his uh, clothes of traveling. Then he told his slave, or yani, he told his family, bring the food. Then he ate, he ate the food. Then Muhammad Kaab asked Anas, he said, yani, he wondered, you are eating before leaving the house? He said, is it sunnah? Anas said, yes, this is sunnah. This is sunnah. Then he, 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 ride his, he rode his camel. So we have Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala an. Hadith in Tirmidhi al albani said this is sahih. A second hadith, an Ubaid ibn Jubair. He said, I went with Abu Busr al-Ghifari radiallahu ta'ala an. Fi Safina in a ship. Okay, in Ramadan. Then he called for his food. Okay, then he told me, come, come. Then I told him, Still, we can see the houses. Still, we can see the house. It means we are in the city. Then Abu Busra said, Do you like to avoid the sunnah of Rasulullah? Okay. So, it means, uh, it means the sunnah of Rasulullah to eat before leaving. So, we have these two hadith. Uh, if the person wants to do that, we say, Well, there is hadith. But to, yeah, and if he said, well, I know uh, to be safe, I will not eat until I leave the houses. It's up to you. It's up to you. Okay. There are different opinions, but we have these two hadith, Anas and Abu Busra al-Ghifari, and also Sheikh Al-Mbarad, Rahimullah, support this uh, opinion. I think I'll stop here. Yes, Sheikh, inshallah, we can take the questions now. <laughs> yes, yes, total. Jazakallah. So the first question is from uh, Brother Mizbauddin at Zoom. If hijama is a form of treatment and it invalidates the fast, then what is the ruling for doctors who perform major surgeries or the dentists who perform tooth extractions? Uh, uh, he's asking if the hijama will invalidate the fasting. So what about those who are doing the surgeries and, and the dentists? We said yes, the majority yeah. of scholars said the hijama will not invalidate fast. Hijama is okay. This is the opinion of the majority of scholars. Okay. So the, for the physician, I mean for the surgeon, he can't do the operation. No problem. For him, there is no problem. But the problem for the, pa pa the patient. Sure. Jazakallah hmm. khashir. The next question is uh, uh, from an anonymous attendee. Uh, during the Battle of Badr, were Sahabas fasting? Allahu alam. During the battle of Badr, Allahu alam. Okay, Sheikh. The next question is that uh, can we perform? Can we apply perfume on dress or body while fasting? Applying perfume, it's okay, no problem. 
uh, apply perfume, oud, rose, okay, musk, no problem. So you, you spray, this will not affect your fast. No problem. As you mentioned, Sheikh al he said, to smell the, the, the perfume, no problem. But the issue, some scholars mention the bukhur. Okay, you know, the smoke, you know, the oud. Uh, like Sheikh Mu'tamini, his opinion, if you put the bukhur and you do like this, this is haram and this will invalidate your fast because the smoke will go inside your body, inside your stomach. But if you keep uh, it like in the open air, no problem. Sure. Sheikh. Next question is about the intention. At what point should we keep the intention to fast? Uh, is it must every day before Fajr Adhan? About the intention, yes, we mentioned that uh, Major Scott said every day should have a special intention. And this is something automatic, yeah. Yani, it is not something difficult. Alhamdulillah. Yani, no need to think about that. Okay, Sheikh. Uh, this is the last question from uh, Muhammad Inshauddin at Zoom. Mm -hmm. Assalamu alaikum. If someone is traveling from Kuwait to India after starting the month of Ramadan, in India, Ramadan starts one day late. So once a person is in India, should he or she complete his fasting as per Kuwait or as per India? He should, the person who travels from one country to another country, Okay, what do the scholars say? The month should not be less than 29. But if it is more, he can he, he should fast with them. Why? Because it is Ramadan. What do I mean? If, he, yani if, if it is the opposite from India to Kuwait, then he found himself that I'm fasting only 28 days. No, this is not acceptable. He should celebrate the Eid with the people. Then after Eid, he should make up one day. Because Ramadan cannot be 28. If it is the opposite, I finish 30 days, but still there is, it is Ramadan. So I will tell you, you fast with them. And after tomorrow, you celebrate with them. So the total will be 20, 31. Jazakallah, Sheikh. That is clear. Yeah. Uh, with that, uh, we have reached the end of uh, Q&A, Sheikh. Uh, Jazakallah, Sheikh, for your time. And I would like to thank the audience as well. For